This is The Rooted Podcast, a conversation about the Christian worldview and its implications for every part of life. The Rooted Podcast is hosted by Steve Royce and Brady Johnson. Together, they have over two decades of experience in the business and tech industries and share a desire to help others filter all of life through the Christian faith. Hi, and thanks for listening to The Rooted Podcast. I'm Steve. And I'm Brady. And on this episode, we're moving into the next key step in our sales process evangelism method, uh, which is really how you're going to actually go about presenting your beliefs and worldview. Yeah, and uh, this is where, because it's it's been a long build up to this point, this is where if you've done the other steps that we've been talking about, you've been able to get to know this person And maybe that has taken a significant amount of time. It may have been over multiple conversations, weeks, months, even years. But in that, in the course of that, you've been able to find out what they believe, why they believe it. Hopefully you've been able to ask them a lot of questions about their perspective. And basically you've put in the time and the effort to make a lot of those relational deposits that we've talked about on previous episodes. And so now, hopefully, you find yourself uh, with an opportunity to share some of your perspective and your beliefs with this person. In fact, if you've used a trigger word or a phrase like we mentioned in our, our last episode and you've gotten that permission to share, I mean, maybe they've even just straight up asked you, about what you believe. And so in that moment, when you've suddenly been given a platform, what do you say? And where do you start? What should you know? And what should you be thinking about in that moment? And so we're going to spend our next couple of episodes discussing those questions and sharing what we think are some really practical tools to, uh, to help you get there. Yeah, for sure. You know, as we mentioned in our last episode, if you recall, uh, it's the sales equivalent of sharing your beliefs with someone uh, that you'd be talking to about your product or your service. And when time comes to do that, you really need to know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, So if you will, we're going to invite you as a listener to join us in a bit of some brainstorming. And yeah, let's just say that you're you know going to go buy a brand new TV, you know, either at a big box electronics store or a wholesale warehouse. And let's say that you, like most consumers do these days, you did a bunch of online research uh, before you ever went into the store. And you maybe even picked out exactly what you want. Um, But you really need to get in person, kind of see it and feel it and ask some questions uh, of someone who may be a little bit more knowledgeable before you pull that uh, trigger and buy it. What are you looking for out of that salesperson or that representative to be able to know about it Uh, What are they going to say or how are they going to answer for you, right? So take a moment and pause it right now and think about it. If you you want to, uh, you can play along at home, as it were. But what we'd like to do is kind of have that discussion amongst ourselves. And so, I mean, we'll just, I'll just throw it out to you, Brady. I'll I'll ask your own question back to you. So (laughs) if you were going to go and buy a new TV right now, first of all, uh, you've got, you've got options, right? You've got led plasma DLP. I think they still make those OLED, Mm -hmm. right? So what, what TV would you, what would be on your radar screen? What would you be looking for first of all? And then from there, if you were going to go and talk to someone at the store, if you're that deep, because I know you're a technical guy, if you're thinking along those terms, what do you expect that salesperson to be able to to tell you about or to know, or are you going to even ask them questions that you already know the answer to because you want to know how they answer? I mean, like, yeah. So whatever, throw it out there. Yeah. I think, you know, for, for me personally, obviously being a little more technical, I, I kind of know that some of the basic specs I'm looking for out of a TV, right? I know kind of what my purpose is for using that TV. You know, some people are, are just looking for that. What's the best picture? You know, for me, I'm thinking, you know, what all am I hooking up to this? What's the picture clarity going to be? What's the refresh rate? 
you know, what's the resolution? And so when I'm going to be asking those questions uh, to the representative, I'm, I'm hoping that they have a little bit of knowledge, maybe some clarification, right? I might have looked at a specific model and, and had a, an assumption about it. And so having some clarity about, hey, here's the facts that I know about this particular model. Is this the case? You know, give them an opportunity to uh, just clarify that. Uh, but also just, you know, things that I may not have known about it or things that I may need to look out for um, in that specific model. So one of the things you mentioned was like what people look for the TV that has the best picture. Mm -hmm. So would you be leery of a salesperson who just walked you over to a particular model and said, this TV has the best picture, period. This is the TV for you. Yeah, I would because, I mean, I want to know why, right? Right. Well, and if if you know if you know even a little bit about the different kinds of televisions that are out there and the the lighting options that they have, you know that the best picture is entirely dependent on the room that that TV is going to end up in. Oh, absolutely. Right? Because a brightly lit room is not going to give you're not going to want the same kind of lighting technology as you would in a dimly lit room where you can control the hard light and all those other things, because with one, you're going to get wash out with mm -hmm. another, it's going to handle it. Okay. It, it, it depends is the right answer. So yep. yeah, if you go in and you're like, Hey, I'm looking for something with a, with a really good picture. If the salesperson's just like, Hey, well, it's this one, I'm going to be suspect because what they should say is, well, that's going to depend on where the TV is going to be in your house. So tell me a little bit about Tell me a little bit about the room that it's going to end up in, right? And you also mentioned all the different connections that it would hook up. So for you, what would be like the bare minimum amount of knowledge or know-how that you would want a salesperson to know about the other stuff that you're expecting to hook up or use? Because the TV has those connections, right? Mm -hmm. So shouldn't they know about that stuff too. Yeah. I mean, just a, a quick rundown to ask me, you know, what am I going to hook up to it? You know, what's like you said, what room is going to be in, you know, what kind of distance are you going to be sitting from the TV? You know, some of those baseline questions are going to help them understand the different components and, and tie those together. Um, I mean, for me, I have a plethora of, you know, entertainment systems or game systems or whatever it might be. You know, if they're not asking those questions, they have no idea what my use case is. This might just be going in a bathroom for all they know. Weird, but yeah, it might be, <laughs> might be going in your bathroom. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, to that point, it's, uh, it's incumbent on them to ask the right questions and to understand where you're coming from before they just throw out blanket answers. Right. Because otherwise they, they may or may not apply to you at all. Right. Uh, and so, no, that's good. That's good. So yeah, I, I think to, to sort of, to put a little bit of a bow on it here is from our perspective. And, and again, this is still with the TV analogy is they better at least know the basic specs and they better, they better know the differences between what the different technologies are and the circumstances in which each one of those is going to be best. If, if I'm your salesperson, I should be able to apply my knowledge of your situation to your use case, which means I need to have asked you about your situation, right? Because yeah. I can't do that if I don't know. And I uh, should be able to answer some of the more technical questions. And that's okay if they don't, if they can't do that. But then at least do they know where to go? Do they know what resources to point you to where you can get those technical questions answered? Because, I mean, I, you've probably experienced it too. Like, what does it do for you if you ask a salesperson a question and it's obvious they don't know the answer and they just either make something up on the spot or they give you an answer that you know as a consumer, like, I've done my research, I know that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Makes you a little upset. A little bit. Steers you down the wrong path. And then you have a little bit of buyer's remorse when you get the tv home and it doesn't have quite the uh if you even get the tv right yeah, even if you get it yeah might be like this dude is shady right he's yeah trying to he's gonna try and sell me an, a sound system out of his trunk after i buy this tv <laughs> you know and and if you if you decided to participate in that on your own and do a little brainstorming that's great but even if you didn't you may have thought of a lot of those same ones or even maybe some additional ones but the question now becomes then how would we apply 
how would we apply those same thoughts about what's important in a salesperson? What kind of experience and knowledge and approach would we want them to have if, if we're the customer and they're the salesperson? How do we apply that to ourselves if we're going to become the kind of quote unquote salespeople for the Christian worldview and, and be able to do some of those same things? So here would be some of the questions to apply what we just talked about to evangelism. So as Christians, do we know the basic doctrines of the Christian faith? Can we articulate with scripture references? That's that's really important. <laughs> Not just what you think or what you feel, but with scripture references, what do Christians believe about uh, the Trinity, the deity of Jesus, salvation by grace through faith, the, the human condition, you know, our fallenness, our sinfulness, and how we came to be that way and why our own works won't suffice to save us, right? How are the New Testament and the Old Testament one cohesive story and how do they tie together what are the ultimate destinies for humans uh, and why what makes something right or wrong or good or bad on the christian worldview uh, what what is what is baptism what does it do and and not do for the christian and what is communion and what does it do and not do for the christian those are just a handful of examples but I, I, I would consider all of those basic doctrine. Those are the basics of what we believe and what sets what we believe apart from what a lot of other religions and worldviews believe. If you can't articulate from the Bible how we get there or why we believe those things from our own scriptures, then you got to you got to know your basics. In fact, there's a, a sales coach that I've I've worked with in my industry in the automotive industry, one of the things that he has always preached to salespeople is that the most important thing that they can get down is not really all the technical stuff, although that's important if you can get there, but that's down the line. His whole mantra to them is that you need to be brilliant in the basics. If you have the basics down cold, then everything else is just kind of icing and and I, I think he's right and I would apply the same the same thinking here. We have to know what we believe about basic Christian doctrine. There's so many Christians that end up articulating non-Christian theology mm -hmm. <laughs> because they don't know what what Christians actually believe or what the Bible actually teaches. Right. So that's the basic stuff. And also throw out there too, you know, as we're thinking about, you know, obviously being able to articulate scripture references, you know, when you're talking about some of the, the core themes and really these basics, I personally struggle with uh, addresses, right? Knowing exactly in the Bible where the, you know, it talks about a specific theme or topic, sure. but that doesn't necessarily mean that we shouldn't know those themes. I think it's important that, you know, we kind of the, the TV analogy, you've read the quick start guide, you know, the core basics, like Steve just said. You know, if we have those to heart, we know those well, you know, those themes shouldn't be something where, you know, we struggle being able to talk about them even topically. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing just as a, this one's for free. I didn't plan on this just popped into my head as you were talking, but one of the things that I've started doing that has helped me with addresses, I have stopped trying to get them perfect. Mm. Meaning, uh, I've stopped trying to memorize the verse yeah. that it is. And I, I've just started trying to, if I can get to the, the chapter, yeah. if I can just say, Oh, that's in first Corinthians five. Mm. If I can get there, I can skim the chapter and I can find it. Right. Uh, even, even if that is too difficult at first, if you can just get to the book mm -hmm. or the context, yeah, the book or the context and mm -hmm. go, I know that it was somewhere in somewhere in first Timothy. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. First Timothy isn't a crazy big book. So at least it wasn't like, Oh, I know it's somewhere in the Psalms. <laughs> Good luck. But you know, at least, at least knowing a part of the address is actually going to go a long way. Or even if it's the author, like if you're like, I know, I know that Paul said it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's not going to get you super far, but it's going to get you further. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if you can, whatever you can do to kind of mentally tag ideas and themes and verses with some sort of 
information that's going to help you get back to it uh, later, you know, that's, that's good. Yeah. So that's the basics. Uh, another question that, that we can apply from this is, you know, as salespeople for the gospel, do we understand the differences in beliefs both within and without the Christian faith? This one I think is a big one that we, we overlook. Can we as Christians articulate what different Christian denominations believe and why they differ, right? Like why, what, not only what do they differ on doctrinally, why, when did that happen and why did it cause a denominational split to happen? That's a big, big part of our uh, heritage as Christians, no matter where you fall on that spectrum, denominations are and splits are part of our heritage over doctrine. And we really should understand that because if we don't understand those differences, then we probably aren't as dialed in on what we believe about those particular doctrines uh, as we could be or should be. So that's within the Christian faith. But then can we articulate what other religions believe and how they differ from Christianity? Uh, So this is other worldviews, other organized religions, other systems of thought in the world? Do we know at least a cursory amount of information about here's what they believe and here's how it's different from what we believe? That's important. And then, yeah, we get to the technical stuff. Can we as Christians answer some of the more technical questions or can we talk coherently about issues that frequently come up like why are there differences in the gospel accounts? How do we know that the manuscripts that we have uh, for the Old and New Testaments are reliable since we don't have any of the originals? And I know Christians that didn't know that we don't have any of the originals. We don't. We don't have any originals. We don't have originals for any ancient document, by the way. But how do we know that the manuscripts are reliable? Uh, Is there any archaeological support for what we read in in the Bible, Old or New Testament? What is the historical evidence for the resurrection of Jesus, not just within the historical manuscripts of the New uh, New Testament, but also extra biblical sources from Greeks, from Romans, from Jews, down through the uh, and church fathers. Right? Questions like if God is good and all loving, then why is there evil in the world? Right? The problem of evil, and then what reasons are there to even believe that a God exists in the first place? So these are, again, they're, they're very technical in nature, and yet they come up all the time. So the question is, just like with the salesperson, if you can't answer those questions, even, even a couple of them, do you even know where to go to point someone to resources that can answer those questions for them? Because there are answers to all of them. So that's, those are the kind of Those are the kind of things that we should be thinking about. And I mean, hopefully it it challenges all of us to realize where there may be some gaps uh, in our knowledge, but you know, those are, that's kind of the lay of the land. And the, I mean, the the point of this is that I've, I've heard Christians in the past uh, respond when it comes to some of these topics anyway, you know, just, well, I just have faith and I, I don't need all this head knowledge stuff. And you know what? Maybe you don't because I I will not be the kind of person that will say everyone needs to know this in order to be a good Christian or to justify their belief. You don't. The Holy Spirit living within us, I think, is justification enough that what we believe is true. So it's not always the case that that we need externals in order to prove it. Although, if we can get externals to prove uh, out what we know to be true, so much the better. But I want you to think about this from the perspective of our our sales analogy, right? So what if you asked the salesperson at the TV store a technical question about the refresh rate of the television, and he said to you, well, I don't think that really matters. I mean, picture looks good, right? So isn't that all that you should care about? If you are a technically minded person, like how would you how would you take that, right? You might be offended that they would dismiss your question. I mean, it might even make you feel bad for asking it, Mm -hmm. but it's a legitimate question. And when it comes to what we believe to be true, I mean, if that's true with a TV, we're talking about the nature of reality here. 
it's legitimate to ask questions. And, and listen, some people really do just care that the TV looks good and that's that's all they need to know. Right. (laughs) And that's okay. If that's you, that's great for them. They just, for those kind of people, they just require less information to be able to justify their decisions. But there's others among us that we naturally have a higher threshold uh, of information before we can rationalize a big decision. And this is the biggest decision in a person's life we're talking about, right? So people are people are the same. If they're that way with TVs, they're that way with worldviews for sure and religions. So you may be the kind of person that doesn't need a lot of evidence or convincing to believe in Jesus. And you know what? That's fine, a hundred percent. But if that's you, I would just challenge you to not think that someone else is wrong because they need more information, more answers to be convinced. They just have a higher threshold than you do. And I would even argue that even if that's not who you are, that all of us, including you, have a duty to equip ourselves with that higher level of information so that when we meet the kind of person that does need it, we know what to do and we know where to take that conversation. We can be that resource for that person, even if we ourselves wouldn't have needed it. Right. And that also doesn't mean that you have to have the answers right away. Again, it's it's that ability to say, you know what, I know where I could look to get that information or, hey, that's a good question. Let me do some research for you. 100%. You know, it's, it's a good opportunity to you know, maybe, maybe take some ownership uh, of what you're going to do. But again, like Steve said, you know, it's important that we're equipping ourselves. And, you know, to that point, it doesn't mean that you have to go to a Bible college or seminary before you're ready. Right. Uh, There's some really solid resources that are out there. Uh, They can kind of train yourself up on these topics, these questions. Uh, And there'll be a bunch of links that we're going to recommend in the uh, show notes in case you want to pick any of them up. Before we go into those, though, I just want to clarify that you may be wondering if there's a, a right place to start or best resource to get. And really to answer that, we would just recommend that the best place to start is either in a topic or an area that you have the most interest in or where you have a most uh, of a need. Maybe there's some specific questions or knowledge gaps that you need to fill uh, a little bit later down the line. So if you're in a conversation with someone and the problem of evil came up, for example, then that's probably a good place to start. But if you feel like you're not very well equipped or most of the basic doctrines are on Christian faith, then a theology book could be best. If you feel okay on the basics, though, uh, but you just don't know anything about other religions or denominations, then that's where a word, worldview survey or a church history book uh, would be best for you. So it all just depends on you and, and what you've identified as being your most pressing needs. And with that said, here's a short list of some recommended resources that Steve has on some of these various topics and questions. Yeah, it's just like our TV analogy, right? The right answer for what should I get is it depends. Mm-hmm. Depends. So we're just going to we're gonna spray and pray here. I'm going to give you a huge list of resources. And like Brady said, we'll have links to them in the in the show notes so if you want to pick them up you can so with that said we'll dive in here so just and again this is not an exhaustive list this is just a handful of recommendations out of my own personal library so these are books that i have or that were part of my schooling so i can vouch for them because i've read them or or at least read significant parts of them so if you're looking for something in basic Christian theology or just Bible knowledge. A uh, handful of books here. Systematic Theology by Wayne Grudem is, I think, still today considered kind of the gold standard for a systematic theology. Now, I'll be the first one to say that Dr. Grudem has a specific set of uh, theological convictions that he holds to that not everyone is going to agree with him on everything. I don't, and that's okay, but I'm still going to recommend this because it is one of the most complete systematic theologies in a single volume that you're probably going to still be able to find. And Dr. Grudem just does a great job of uh, getting into the details and really rounding out. I mean, just just pretty much anything and everything it's going to be in there. So it's a great resource to have, even if you may differ with him on certain certain uh, theological conclusions about different doctrines. 
still worthwhile. Uh, An Introduction to the New Testament by D.A. Carson and Douglas Moo. That's a great background book. Uh, A Survey of the New Testament by Robert Gundry, also an amazing book for Bible background, cultural background, that kind of stuff. And then the Bible background commentary uh, on the New Testament by Craig Keener is another uh, great, great resource to have. So if you just want general Bible knowledge, if you want some basic theology or just to kind of get your feet wet in this this whole deal, any of those are going to be great, great books to pick up. Uh, Switching topics for a comprehensive overview of how the Old and the New Testaments tie together. I would highly, highly recommend Supernatural by Dr. Michael Heiser. Uh, That is a shorter read version of his uh, Unseen Realm, which I've recommended on other podcast episodes. So if you're just looking to get exposed to these ideas of how ancient Near Eastern culture and Semitic culture and ancient worldviews and uh, thinking impacted how the Old Testament comes together and then how those ideas get directly translated into the New Testament and how it all sort of fits together, I would highly recommend Supernatural. Uh, A look, uh, if if you're interested in church history or denominational differences in Christianity, I can recommend two. Uh, One is Church History in Plain Language by Bruce Shelley. And the other is uh, Turning Points by Mark Knoll. Both of those take a big picture look at church history, and they they try not to get too bogged down in the weeds of the in-between, and they just focus on sort of the the peaks of the mountaintops uh, rather than rather than looking at every every little step along the way, especially Turning Points does that. Uh, if you're interested in Uh, different worldviews and how they differ in their beliefs from Christianity. The Universe Next Door by James Sire is a must-have. It's one of still the best in one book worldview surveys that I think you can get out there. On the reliability of the Bible, there's two resources I would recommend. One is Cold Case Christianity by J. Warner Wallace. He's a former, actually I think he's still a current cold case homicide detective and he applies his his uh, methodology as a detective to the reliability of the eyewitness accounts in the new testament mainly the gospels and so that's an interesting journey to follow along and see the bible through the eyes of a, a homicide detective almost as if he's conducting an investigation And then another one on the reliability of the Old Testament by K.A. Kitchen. This one's a little bit dated, but uh, and some of his information isn't quite as up to date based on more recent archaeological uh, findings. However, uh, it's a great, great look at specifically the Old Testament reliability in the manuscripts and all that stuff. If you're looking to get more information on understanding uh, difficult parts of the Bible or just... uh, how to how to deal with how the Bible in, intersects with some of the hot button cultural issues that we have uh, in our culture today? Uh, I would highly recommend questioning the Bible by Jonathan Morrow, and then Mike Lacona wrote a book called "Why Are There Differences in the Gospels," which I feel like is pretty self explanatory. So, Doctor Lacona did a great job with that one uh, by looking at ancient genres of literature and kind of understanding what were the standards for writing literature according to the day and the time in which they were written rather than applying our standards to them. Uh, For archaeology and the Bible specifically, uh, there's two, Archaeology and the Old Testament by Alfred Hirth and Archaeology and the New Testament by John McRae. And they're they're part of a set and so they're going to they're going to look and feel very similar. But obviously, one, uh, each one is focused on uh, one particular testament. On the historicity of the resurrection of Jesus, two books I would highly recommend. One is The Resurrection of Jesus by Mike Lacona. That is a weighty tome. I'll just say that. I think that one, I had to read that one in grad school. I think it's like seven or 800 pages. But it is the one, it has to be one of the most comprehensive looks at the 
historical documents, both within and without the Bible, that support the historicity of the resurrection. On a much uh, smaller, more compact scale, there's a book, a little book, relatively little, called The Sun, S-O-N, Rises by William Lane Craig. Uh, on the problem of evil, if that's a topic you, you need some more information on, uh, two recommendations. One, Why Does God Allow Evil by Clay Jones. He and a and little plug here, he was a former professor of mine uh, at Biola, and he actually oversaw my thesis. So I know Dr. Jones, he's, he's awesome. He, uh, he actually teaches an entire class called Why Does God Allow Evil?, at Biola. So this guy knows what he's talking about on this topic. And then the other one is kind of a classic. It's uh, The Problem of Pain by C.S. Lewis, which is his book on, on the problem of evil. One more category. If you're looking for resources just on why belief in God or any God is rational in the first place, uh, if, you're, if you happen to be talking to someone who's an atheist or an agnostic, just says, I don't, I don't think there's evidence that any any deity exists, or that theism is a is a tenable worldview. Uh, three three resources here. One is On Guard by William Lane Craig. It's a great just basic apologetic survey of a lot of the the great arguments for theism. Uh, Philosophical Foundations for a Christian Worldview by J P Moreland and William Lane Craig. This one is a lot more technical and academic in nature, but again, if philosophy is your bag you are going to eat this up. And then the last one is also by J.P. Moreland. It is called The Soul. And he is a philosopher. He's one of the best Christian philosophers uh, alive today, I think. And uh, Dr. Moreland just lays out a very well-argued case that we are not just our bodies. We are not just our brains. And there's actually objective and measurable things that we can look at in in our own life experience that would point to that. So really good, really good resources. I'm sure that feels like a lot, but it's just, if you you were to see Steve's library, he could go on and on and on. (laughs) Uh, But there's really so much more uh, to just these handful of kind of Kickstarter resources. And, And if you're not the type of person where a book physically in your hand is what you need, I personally subscribe to Audible, and a lot of these uh, resources are also uh, as audiobooks as well. So, really find the way that you can get the resources in the format that makes sense for you ebooks, uh, physical books, audiobooks, whatever works for you. And really, the main purpose of this episode is to get you thinking about you know, how a good salesperson uh, would really be in your faith uh, if you were put on the spot right now. Yeah, I mean, like Brady said, that. If you want to, if you want to access these resources, like I happen to be a physical book person. I just, I enjoy the the tactile, you know, nature of reading a a real book. But if you're an ebook person or if you like listening to books, it's almost like the, the old adage of like, what's the best translation of the Bible? It's the one that you'll read. (laughs) It's the same thing as like, what's the best way to, to, you know, dive in and start learning. However, you will actually do it. That's mm-hmm. the best way to do it. So what, whatever there. So, and, and I'll just say, like we have said before on this podcast, if you want to be good at this, you know, if you take this seriously and take your job as a, a salesperson for the Christian worldview seriously, then it's going to take work. It's going to take effort and it's going to require a certain amount of dedication and commitment on your part and my part to always learning, always growing and always improving so that we can continue to be more and more impactful on the people that are in our circles of influence. We're never done learning. We're never done growing. And so if we decide to take time off, if we decide to just rest on our our laurels, I do believe we are sacrificing some of the impact that we could have on others. So I'll just challenge you as I'm going to challenge myself. Don't do it. I, I, I'll i challenge you to get something, uh, even if it's not out of the, this list that we just gave you, but get something, uh, get a resource and dive into growing yourself in some way so that you can be the best ambassador for Christ that you can be. And, and really no one is going to be comparing your abilities to someone else's. Well, they might be, but they 
they shouldn't be. They'd it's be wrong, wrong to do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what Paul says in in First Corinthians three is that you and I will be evaluated by God based on what we could have done with what we we're given. And it's just like the parable of the talents. The master didn't hold all of the servants to the same standard because they were given a different amount to begin with. But he did expect them all to do something with that time, the treasure, and the talents that they were given. So do something with your talents. Thanks for joining us on the Rooted Podcast, a creation of Rooted Productions and an affiliate of the Oasis Church in Gilbert, Arizona. For more information about the podcast or to submit a question or comment, please visit us at rooted.productions. Follow us on Instagram at rooted.productions or email podcast at rooted.productions. That's rooted.productions. We hope you'll join us next time.